In this video, I'm going to tell you one tip for every single stand in your bizarre adventure. Because of each stand plays differently, and I know many people struggle to start playing a new stand, so hopefully this video should help you with that. I'm going to go in order of Jojo parts, starting with part 3, and there'll be timestamps in the description as well as the comments for each stand if you want to skip to a certain one. This video is for beginners as well as for some intermediate players, and I just want to and I want to let it be known that I am not the best player out there, but this should help you get the ball rolling on some stands. And with all of that out of the way, let's move on to the first stand. Hammer Purple is the only stand in the entire game that actually has skill points for a spec, and it makes it so any of your attacks that do damage on Hammer Purple proc the fire status effect. Even your M1s can do this. But Hammer Purple isn't a humanoid stand, so Belgian can be lethal for it. Try and keep a good uptime on your fire procs, as paired with Hammer Purple's damage multipliers, it can stack to do a lot of damage. Use Inhale as much as you can get away with, as it's the closest in the space tool in this game, which there are only a few of. Honestly, Inhale is a godsend because there's no real way to deal with people that run. This move can guarantee them to use their cooldowns or block, which puts you at an advantage by default. Remember to switch up what you do with your Inhale each time, so that way people don't know whether to block or not. Also, I'm going to include a bonus tip because this affects all the Rage tier stands, like the World, the World EU and Star Platinum. I personally don't like unlocking time stop as you barely get any time and it costs too many skill points for my liking. I massively prefer using the rage for the defense and damage increase. But it's up to you, doesn't really matter. Don't just throw out your road roller randomly. Players are used to the worlds doing this 1v1s all of the time because there's an infestation of them trying to get the world over heaven quest. Instead, wait for a block break which can guarantee plenty of stuns so the enemy takes all the hits from the move rather than falling out because the hitbox is kind of terrible. Always remember to use your remove armor ability whenever you can as there's literally no downside to using it. It buffs your M1 and barrage speed, which can help you win some M1 fights as you get the final knockdown hit quicker. Also, whenever you get stand crashed, the visual to show that you have the buff is gone, but you still have it active, which is misleading. Also, you can land a million pricks on opponents that are blocked, and force a block break so more of your moves land. Lots of people when playing Magician's Red just throw out both their crossfire hurricanes hoping to snipe people, which can sometimes be ineffective against people that constantly run, or just good players. It's okay to play slow when using this stand as it only has a few moves, because all the moves are very good for punishing. Also just to note, every single move Magician's Red has other than crossfire hurricane has high prama, but they're all blockable. However, to make up for it not having high prama, it block breaks. Just something to remember. Use Pilot as much as you can get away with. It's fast and it creates more space for you and less for them. As well as the fact that Hyrofit Green has two moves that multi-block break, which is really good for stunning your opponent for a good while. It's obnoxious and a lot of people hate fighting it and, well, do you blame them? Anubis has an upgrade in its skill tree that makes it for the last M1 in your M1 chain. Block breaks. Every time. Even if the M1s didn't land, you just have to get to the last one. It's actually worth finishing your M1 chains in fights. Also, after image works perfectly fine on just the base unlock, the other upgrades just give more distance and speed. It's kind of pointless, plus the skill point cost of each upgrade being 5 points doesn't help, but it could be useful in Steel Ball Run I suppose. Again, like with Magician's Red, it's okay to play this stand slowly, because all of Cream's moves are cancelable, have no high prama and they're easily avoidable. Instead, wait for your enemy to throw out moves so you can punish them with your powerful limb removing abilities. Also, Cream Dimension Dip can easily avoid time stop as well as time raise. Use this to your advantage. In the Old Over Heaven skill tree, this stand has a passive that makes it so all of its abilities are true damage, which means your M1s will always deal 10.1 damage. So I'd recommend trying to get into as many M1 trades as you can, as if they have Boxing's passive defense, White Album's passive defense, Spins, Hamons, it doesn't matter. You will win the M1 battle and deal more overall damage. Crazy Diamond is part of the reworked stands collection, so it has a lot of moves, which most are blockable. You don't just randomly throw them out. Rather, use them ones and spec moves to confirm a block break or a stun, so that way you can land your moves more frequently. The hand is very similar to Cream, where both your erasure moves are very easily cancelable, so make sure you confirm a stun so you get a guaranteed erasure, so you can do hefty amounts of damage. Also, just a side note, don't use Erasure Pool. It has too much end lag. It's not worth it. Skullcrusher is just a terrible move. 
it used to be worse because you used to be able to parry it. But you only can just block it now. Just don't bother using it unless you can guarantee it. Instead, I'd recommend maxing out your kick speed. As once they're fully upgraded, they're very hard to parry and do a lot of damage. Even though you now passively gain electric charge, that doesn't mean that you still shouldn't charge it manually. Try and get as much of it as you can as Electrify is very good to use as it gives TP dashes and really good M1 stun. The passive charge alone won't be enough to use your abilities and gain maximum value from Electrify, so remember to keep it up. I'm going to merge Killer Queen and Bites the Dust as Bites the Dust only adds one extra move. Try and keep people in bomb loops. It's hard to keep fighting someone up close as most of your bombs have knockback. Keep your distance and detonate your bombs on get up, so that way you get maximum efficiency out of your bombs. Also, a little bonus tip, you can just repress the bomb button again to activate it rather than press Y and go onto that menu. Not a lot of people know this, but your frog punch actually makes the frog count as a second hitbox, which means you can easily land your beatdowns or kicks or any other damaging move. It's annoying and I forget it exists a lot of the time. Again, Sticky Fingers is part of the reworked stance collection, so it has a lot of moves. One of which is Zipper Flank, which is really slow without much investment in the skill tree nodes. It also has a long wind up, so don't use it unless you want to fully invest in it. I'd recommend getting stand speed 1 or 2, as it's 15 points to max out otherwise. Aerosmith thrives on using pilot as much as you can. It's really fast and has a massive range. It's really good at agitating your opponents and chipping their HP down. Also, something to remember is that if your stand touches anything on the map, like a building or the floor, your stand desummers automatically. But I found this bug where if you move while going into the pilot, you can go through buildings for a few seconds. I think it's so your stand can't be desummered accidentally, but I don't think it's very fair. I think it needs to be patched. Six Pistols is the only non-humanoid stun that has improved dash, which makes it so you can dash out of stun, such as barrages. So save it for when an enemy hits you with one, so that way you can escape and punish them. Know your distance when it comes to chucking your bobs on people. It's really good to make them chase you with that as they get hit with a lot of poison. However, be careful because you can really easily poison yourself. Also, Purple Haze has the best rage bar in the entire game, which makes you immune to your own poison, and it lasts an eternity. Max out your rage. It's really worth it. Wait for your enemy to throw out a move that causes lots of end lag, so that way you can trap them in your room. Shake the key as fast as you can and remember to enter the room and M1 them. This prevents them from posing and recovering HP. A lot of people hate Beach Boy because of most of its moves block break and have high damage multipliers. Use Rod Slap on get up when your enemy tries to barrage you as it has a misleading animation. Also, its M1s have a slightly longer range than most stands M1s, so use this to your advantage. Try and keep gently weeps up as much as you can. Try and be really aggressive with it as it slows down your enemy and makes it harder for them to avoid your attacks. Most people will just try and wait out your gently weeps, so just try and constantly close the gap and keep the pressure up. Just don't get chopped passive. It could ruin your combo and you can just do more damage with literally anything else. It's pointless. Just don't. Unlock every move. GER's kit is stacked. It has a lot of moves that block breaks. So you can play very aggressive and be rewarded for it. Also, Return to Zero has other uses aside from stopping time related abilities. It also gives you iframes so you can avoid other moves. So there's that. People always fall for Barrage to Scythe, so use it as often as you can as Scythe has a huge range, as well as the fact that if it lands, they have a removed limb. And if they block, well, you have an opening to unload loads of damage. Also, something I completely forgot to mention when it comes to King Crimson and King Crimson Requiem is that you can use time arrays to avoid time stop. So yeah, I don't know how that went over my head. Don't use your arrow barrage first if you know the enemy has their stand barrage off cooldown. It places you into a combo as it puts your stand barrage on cooldown. Instead, try and find other ways to use Arrow Barrage, such as having your own shadow up. String Bandage is kind of pointless to get. Even at maximum upgrades, it only heals a measly 25 HP, and it has an annoying wind-up. Also, String Pilot into Home Run is a true combo, and it's really good for catching people that are far away. Pilot into Acidic Spew is really good at catching people. It also works after the player's been knocked down. Plus, his pistol move is really good, because it's like Hyphant Greens where multi-hit block breaks. Also, White Snake is one of the best stands to fight hard bosses with, as he can remove their stand. See? Look at him. Dead. Loser. Pilot Barrage into Counter can work on a lot of people, so try and use it. Also, as well with most pilot stands, Seaman is really good to annoy people with, as Pilot can be hard to deal with. Your knives have a very low cooldown. Try and do as many M1 trades and knives as you can while you have your double excel up, as it's easier to get the ragdoll. Try and keep the pressure up so you can land more of your moves. 
Tusk Act 1 actually has some stupid combo with spin that does an insane amount of damage. Also, its skill tree is really cheap, so you can literally max out your stand and spin. But some people just say it's better to use Act 4. Boring. You get wormhole nails as well as golden rectangle nail, but like, Act 3 is just a better version of this. With all Tusk Acts 1 through 3, just play like a little rat, run around and poke people down. People get really annoyed at this. Most of its cooldowns are actually quite low, so paired with spin you can actually cycle them well. It's actually really fun. But remember to keep your distance because barrages are your counter. Don't randomly throw out wormhole uppercut. Most people expect it. Rather, use it after dashing away or use it when you get a block break. Also, tea time sucks. It's the same issue as stone freeze where it costs too many skill points and has a wind up. Just don't bother in my opinion. Again, same thing with killer queen and bice dust. It just adds one move, so I'm merging them together. Using your revolver to snipe your enemy to stun them can help your clone actually hit them, as most people just tend to run. Also, having a good few upgrades in Love Train makes it so you can barrage your enemy first, and they can't do anything. Once again, this stand is part of the reworked stand collection, which means it has a lot of moves. It almost has double moves because of dino form and human form, so get used to cycling them as they can loot. And you can literally just mash anything on your keyboard and it will work. Scary Monsters is hella annoying. Use your knives in M1 trades as often as you can. It can get you more stun and make them panic and try and block, which you could just revolve with them and get a block break. The order you is really good for keeping pressure up. For the last time, I merge Soft and Wet and Soft and Wet Go Beyond, as it only adds one extra move. Not only does Beatdown confirm Go Beyond, but if you have Boxing, Haymaker also confirms it, as they have similar knockdown duration. Also, this is one of the first stand heals that's actually useful, because it gives you verticality. You can use it to avoid time stops. And that's it. Wow, that took a long time to script and record. Thank you for making it to the end, you're a real one. It's really hard to condense how to use a stand in just one tip, but hopefully I made it work. Also, I might have cheated and included a few tips for each stand, but that's not an issue, right? <laughs> All these tips are just my opinion, and feel free to add or correct me in the comments. If you want to see another video formatted like this, let me know, because this was actually quite fun to make. I would like to thank Chump and Dragon Soul for helping me out with this video, because I needed test dummies. <laughs> I'll put their channels in the description. Again, thanks for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next video.